What do you do when you find out a secret? Do you keep it to yourself or do you share it? But what if sharing it is the thing that's going to destroy everybody? Don't know what I'm talking about? You'll find out. Coming up next, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome to The Right Stuff. I'm the queen, Parker J. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to have a phenomenal time as I talk to my guest co-host and contributor today, Esther Espinoza. She is the author of the book, Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. It's part of the Charlotte Bay series, available wherever books are sold. And she is joining us all the way from down under. I cannot wait to have you talk to her in just a few moments. As always, we want to thank you for your support. We have been showcasing Christian authors worldwide for the past nine years. And as God gives us grace, we'll continue to do so. To find out how you can help out, simply go to patreon.com slash write stuff and see what you can do. And as always, we covet your prayers. To stay up to date with PJC Media, simply go to pjcmedia.net, click on that pink follow button, and you'll never, ever have to miss a show. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel for exclusive content, shows, and more. Go ahead, click that bell, and get notified every single time we upload a new episode. Lastly, thank you so much for your support of my newest release, A Chance with Zhao Xin. Your response has been absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, go ahead and do it today exclusively on Amazon.com. And now, without further ado, I'm going to bring my guest on board. Esther, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for the invite and having me on your podcast. I got to let our listeners know how you and I connected. Go ahead, tell them all about it. I actually belong to a group of called Christian Book Academy. And so it's a great program where we keep each other accountable in our writing, which is what we need. And I was invited to speak and Parker was there and we connected that way when I talked about some books that I had done. Yeah, that's what I remember. And it's Shelley Hitt's group. And for those of you who know, we've had several of Shelley Hitt authors on the show. So if you want to take your writing to another level, we're going to give you the link to Shelley Hitt's training course in the link below. So go ahead and click on it. Find out how she can help you just grow your author business. So Shelley Hitt, thank you so much for the connection. And I was telling our listeners before we talked with another Shelley Hitt author <laughs> that I do what I do best, Esther. And I was just talking <laughs> the entire <laughs> time while everyone's doing their spiel and doing their speech. That's how you and I connected. And now we further connected with your book, Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. And I can't wait to let our listeners know all about it. But as they can tell, you're from down under because of that lovely accent of yours that you have. So <laughs> I want people to know more about you. So go ahead and share yourself with our listeners today. Well, yes, I'm Esther and I live in Brisbane, Australia. And it's actually 9.31 a.m. here on a Tuesday morning. And I know that it's evening over there. And I've, I've had this passion for writing. I've started a, a ministry with my sisters a few years ago where we did magazines for teen girls. And that passion for writing and letting others know about, you know, about God in a kind of interesting way has always stayed with me. So I pursued the, the dream of becoming a full-time writer and I did that a year and a half ago where I resigned from my job and, and I can do this full-time, which has been a blessing for me and, and I'm hoping it's been a blessing for the girls who are reading the book as well. I remember when I made that same leap of faith back in 2019 when I decided to become a writer full-time and it definitely is a leap of faith because now you go from the stability of having a regular nine to five to guess what? We're going to use all of our creative energy and do what we always wanted to do. But one thing is that the desire has always been in you. And so my question for you, and this is a fun question I like to ask our authors sometimes. Are you a Christian author or an author who is Christian? Uh, I love both. Can I say I'm both? <laughs> okay, so we can. <laughs> 
So I am a Christian and I am a Christian author. So I do write Christian, like God is always in, in my book. That was just something personal that I made the decision. I had gone off a little route of writing, you know, things on spirit and, and magic and ghosts and all that. That was a world that I was attracted to as I was growing up. And, and as I got older and, and I remember being in the car with my mom one day and I was telling her and I was complaining about the fact that I had written this amazing book. I don't even remember the details of what the book was about, but it was for children, chapter for children. And in the story, the, the, the ancestor comes back from, you know, her spirit comes to visit the girls, the twin girls. And I had written this, this book and I was telling mom, you know, I sent it off to, to the publishers and they have rejected it again. This is like the 20th um, rejection letter. And I really don't know why. And my mom said to me, well, she goes, you know, we don't really believe in that kind of thing as in it's not something that we, you know, worship. So she goes, do you think you're writing in the, in the right genre? Why don't you try writing for Christian, for the Christian market and, and about God? And instantly I said, no, that is boring. There is nothing to write about. I, I, I can't imagine writing for, for you know, but God, what am I going to say? What am I going to write about? It's boring. But that little plant, that, that little seed that she had planted in my brain bothered me the whole week. That whole week I had this internal battle inside where I knew that God was calling me to make a difference in this world, to, to bring his word out and share it with others. But I was resistant. And then one Saturday morning, I woke up and I knelt down. I remember kneeling down on my bed because that war, that, you know, that dark cloud, that war of, I'm going to write for the Christian market. No, I'm not going to write. I'm still going to write my, you know, ghost stories. It was a battle in me. I knelt down and I said to God, God, I surrender. That was the only thing I said, I surrender. And instantly that weight and that battle that I felt inside lifted straight away. And I thought, okay, this is my path. This is what God is calling me to do. So I made that decision of this is, I want to write about God. I want, I want to write modern stories that are going to apply to the girls, but I do want to include God in there because he just yeah, called me to serve him in that way. And then I didn't have to worry about publishing with anyone anymore because I went into, you know, of publishing indie author and I can do my own publishing myself. And I'm working towards God willing, becoming an actual publisher where we can publish other women or men who write teens. We'll see where God leads. It's interesting how the Lord just takes us down this path once we do surrender to him. And I love hearing your story about that. And I'm sure for our listeners out there, that is also resonating with you as well. So this show is always about encouraging authors whom God has given the gift to write to pick up the pen and do so. So I hope that's just one nugget that you'll hear that you'll hear today that will encourage you. Now let's go ahead and talk about this book of yours that I have been just eating up today, dear listener. Let me tell you, most of you know, I'm not really into YA, but every YA book I have interviewed on this show has been a phenomenal feat of just words and the things that I think everyone will appreciate. And this one is no different. It's called Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the story itself, I want you to give us some background into what was the genesis for this particular story. So I think, well, first of all, my sister and I years ago, this was when she was a young, maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, we created these characters which was the Charlotte Bay girls. We created this world of girls um, who, you know, were cousins. Of course, they evolved throughout the years, but we always had this passion of seeing these characters live. And then in 20, I think it was 2015, I thought it was time to bring them into a book. So I started writing a background story and I was getting coaching. I'm not sure if you're, you know, um, Nancy Rue. Not right offhand, but go ahead and finish your story. Yeah, she's, uh, she's this amazing Christian author, wonderful woman, well-known. She writes a lot of children and young adults stories and also, I think, a non-fiction book. But, um, but I, was, I started working with her because I had this 
this dream in my heart that I wanted to bring these characters out. I didn't know what um, what the story was going to be as such. And so I, I seeked help and he was coaching me to to write and get a you know outline of the story. And um, so I, I started working with her and slowly the story of Giselle started coming out. And this was way back in 20, 2015, I think it was. And there were some gaps in between. She challenged me in some of the things of how, you know, it, how is this going to follow along to the next next point and this and that. And then um, sadly I had to stop working with her because we had a family incident and I, I, I forgot the book, got everything about it. And then when I actually resigned from a job in 2021, 20, yeah, July 2021, I, um, I remembered this book, Giselle. Giselle was still there. She uh, hadn't come out yet. And that, that passion was revived again. It was on fire. And I thought, okay, this is it. This is my chance. God has brought me out of my job. And now it's time for me to stop giving excuses and bringing this book to life. So I sat down one day, I got out all the notes I had, started putting them together and the story started flowing. And what I loved most about it was the way that, you know, Giselle is a a normal, I would say normal teen girl, nothing special about her. But the way her story started coming about was really godly. And so I, soon after that, I found Shelly Hip and I joined CBA. Christian Book Academy, and and I thought this is my chance to to get the support I need and to write this book. So it took me from November to April to write, to edit, to get it professionally edited, and to uh, publish the book, Giselle. But uh, it was just um, just amazing way the the God opened every door, everything was when it was supposed to happen, and yeah, and Giselle came out, and I just wanted a normal teen girl that my nieces could relate to and that you know they enjoy and the other thing that I forgot to mention was we've got a podcast for teen girls and we have shared little my sister and I do the podcast together so we have shared little stories of the Charlotte Bay girls just things the girls go through and that has been so popular on the podcast girls emailing us we love Charlotte Bay girls can you write more can you please write more and so we have that in the background as well I thought this is this is it. The girls relate to this character, and it needs to to come to life. So that was, you know, the background on how the story all happened. But it's been a few years in the in the making. Well, you definitely have to tell us about your podcast now. Oh yeah. yes. So the podcast we have one for children and one for teen girls. The teen girl one is called GG Teen Radio, and GG stands for Gorgeous in God's Image. So it's an acronym and it's every Monday and we just share topics with the girls during the, that month. So for example, the month of February, it was all about gratitude, being grateful. So we share stories, um, we buy a license so that we can feature Christian artists. We can give girls another music choice that they can listen to with artists. And then, yeah, we link the story to something biblical of God wants us to learn. So that has been a blessing actually for us and for the girls listening. And we have girls in the States and all over listening to them. So yeah, it's really exciting. You said you had two podcasts. Yes, the little children one that's called Car Ride Stories for Gigi Kids. And originally I did that one because I, I, I remember driving my nieces and my nephews to school and they were bored in the car and they wanted to do something. And so I created this for they could listen to stories in the car and I wanted other parents to have that, you know, that piece. And, and so, yeah, that's also on every, they're both on every podcast platform that they listen to. But it's, yeah, it's very exciting where God is taking that one as well, how it's growing and evolving. Hey, man, I love sharing other podcasters, especially Christian podcasters who are doing something for the kingdom. So for my listeners out there, make sure you check out these two podcasts. They will be in the link and show description below. So go ahead and check them out today. Go ahead, subscribe and listen to them and support our Christian brothers and sisters all the way from down under. Now we're going to dig into this book, Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. Let me tell you, I was telling Esther before the show 
that it was excruciating. And you may think, oh my gosh, BJ, why are you saying the word excruciating? But Giselle understands what I mean. She has effortlessly told this story in such a way that you are Hansel and Gretel following the breadcrumbs, trying to figure out the secret of the locket. And through the eyes of G, which is our main character in the story, Giselle, we find ourselves seeing a murky undertone under what's happening in her day-to-day -day life. She's a regular kid with regular problems, but she does have interesting family dynamics. But don't take my word for it. Esther, go ahead and tell them what the secret of the locket is about. Yes. So um, Giselle is a regular 16-year-old girl. She's about to start her senior years here in Australia. Year 11 and 12 are senior years. So she's going into year 11. That was a big year for her. And during one of the events, they're going to get together as a family. And she's in a normal um, shed. So her grandfather, that he's Italian, was Italian. She finds a locket. And on the locket, there is an, it's engraved with initials OAB. So she's baffled by this whole locket mystery and she's wondering why her deceased grandfather had it in his possession. So she decides to investigate, to start digging a little deeper to see what, what it is. And little does she know that this locket is going to be a whirlwind of events. Uh, they're going to be open up this recurring nightmare that is revealing secrets of her past, but eventually the, the secret will come out and it's actually going to rock her world. It's going to be some shattering news that she did not expect that was going to happen. And so she needs to, to see, you know, there's a love interest. How is she going to navigate that? She's in senior year. How is she going to navigate that? She's dealing with the nightmares. How is she going to navigate that? And then she's got this locket that she's going to find. She needs to find out the, the meaning of it. So seems like her little world is just crumbling around her and she doesn't know what to do, but she's determined to get to the bottom of it. And one thing too, is that all of this drama adds to the deliciousness of the story because she really is a regular girl. And I think sometimes adults can forget that kids have a lot of things they are going through as well. They may not be as sophisticated or mature as the adult mind, but they have their issues as well. We want to be cognizant of it. There's another aspect I love about this book, and it's the family dynamic. Now, tell us who the Charlotte Bay girls are. So there are actually six girls in the Charlotte Bay series, and they're all cousins. We have Giselle, which this is her first story. Then we have Esmeralda. Uh, we have Catherine and Emily, Silver and Sophie. So those six girls make the girls of Charlotte Bay, and they they are very close. They, they have grown up together. They will experience things together that they go through. Um, and it's just a beautiful dynamic between family. I know sometimes it's hard to get along with your, with your loved ones, but in the book we wanted it to be, even if they, they argue or they get cranky at each other, we still want them to be family. It's very important. So each girl has their own little you know, stories that will be revealed in other books. But this one that concentrates on Giselle shows a beautiful uh, friendship she has with her a girl cousin. And that was one aspect of the book that I particularly enjoyed is that family dynamic. It's not a hateful dynamic. It's a dynamic that shows no matter what, we are in this together. And she's really close to all of her cousins. Now, Giselle is also a very talented artist. And as an artist, she writes in her diary. And then at the end of each entry, she dibbles a little bit of a sketch of something that is the theme of what she talked about in her diary. I found this a very significant part of the story, even though I wasn't quite sure why. It's because it reflects something that you do yourself. Are you an artist? Do you think that's just something that's just major to her? What are some of your thoughts behind that? No, I'm not an artist. I wish I was. <laughs> I started, I started just drawing during COVID because everything happened during COVID in 2020. And because we couldn't go to church, I started drawing in a notepad because I've always had fascination, but I can draw. But with Giselle, because she's an artist, she could draw anything, I guess, what I want to be able to do. I just found it really important for her to, 
to draw something that she was comfortable with. Like her, she prefers to draw than write. So that's the way that she, um, I think it's part of her, part of her, her little soul that came out or that came through so that she stands out from any other part of the story. But that was something, yeah, that I was intentional about. I really loved, I don't know why as well, like you, I really loved that part of her diary entry where she drew something to end her her diary entries at the end of each one. I don't know, it's just special, I guess. It makes me jealous because I can't draw a straight line and my sick (laughs) people look like they're in danger of dying. And so I don't have a drawing (laughs) bone in my body. But I like the fact that she expresses herself in this manner. And I think that's important, too. When we deal with our young people, they do have these hidden talents out there. And sometimes they just take it for granted. Because when she was drawing, I had this vision of how she drew her pictures. And she probably drew it very effortlessly without thought at all, where I would be going, I need the protractor, (laughs) the ruler, the pencil. I need a book. I need rule paper, grid paper. And now I need someone to help me with all of that. (laughs) But I think that's why I really enjoy that aspect of her diary. Another aspect I love is that she has a close relationship with, by the time you get to the beginning of the book, you find out her grandfather is deceased. But she had a very close relationship with her grandfather. What is the backstory behind her grandfather and why he's added as a very essential character to this narrative? So her her grandfather, when um, through the story, you'll because she used to live in in London with her parents and Giselle, that is, she used to live in London with her parents. And after her her father passed away, then her mom and Giselle moved back to to Australia, and they went to live with the the nono and the grandma. So the relationship grew from that, grew where he you know supported his. He was her biggest supporter in, in, her, in her drawing. He uh, would buy her things so that she could draw. Um, she would draw little images for him, like at the beginning of the book, where, where she finds that she still has a drawing that she did on a little canvas. Uh, and so he was one of the biggest cheerleaders in her life. And because she didn't have a father, that male figure, and her nono became her everything. He became her, her that someone she leaned on. And because he had no children at home, she became his, you know, everything. So they had this beautiful connection of, of love between, between them. They came together during a hard time of Giselle and he was there to, to help her through it. There is everything in this book, dear listeners. So go ahead and pick up your copy of Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. It's available wherever books are sold. You're going to love it because you're going to get an idea of what, is, of what life, I guess, is like in Australia, at least a fantasized life. They're all rich in this book. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. And, yes. and um, <laughs> where the book they are. But they're also just really down to earth, young kids getting along, trying to make do with what's happening in their lives. And the characters are all well fleshed out. Even the side characters are fleshed out. And just this family dynamic is just absolutely phenomenal. I think parents will definitely enjoy this book. It's a wholesome, clean read for your young adult, but it's not safe. I don't want to say safe, clean read because she does deal with some really interesting problems. One of the things she deals with is how much do you tell your parents? How much do you pray? How much do you really believe God for what it's going for? So there's a lot going on in Giselle's young life that I want you to find out by getting your copy of Giselle. This is a locket available today wherever books are sold. Now, in the few moments that we have left, Esther, what are your next projects? So currently I'm working on, it's called The Royal Palace. So it is six women of the Bible, six royal women of the Bible, that it's sorry, they compile stories in a book, six of them, and then it's going to come with an accompanying Bible study that the girls can study in a group or by themselves, and they will learn more about each of these of these girls and how they their life in the Bible applies to them today. So that's been a really exciting project. And I'm also finishing another book for children. I'm up to the, the you know, putting all the illustrations together, not drawn by me. We've got an amazing artist, Katie, here in Australia. She does all my drawings and she just sent me all the illustrations that I'm doing for, for this children's book. So there's a few projects that I'm working on. And yeah, I just can't wait. I'm an impatient project maker. 
I want things to be done today. <laughs> but, you know, with book writing and everything, it takes a few months, but it, it's worth it. If people want to get in contact with you, where can they find you online? So the website is called Gigi, so G-I-G-I, Gigi Story Library dot com dot au and we have uh, the books we have available here in Australia as well as available internationally and the podcast details are on there and the new the Royal Palace Bible study set as well is that you can find. In the few moments we have left Esther go ahead and encourage our aspiring authors out there today. Oh to our aspiring authors don't give up. You have a message to give um, you have been blessed with the gift of writing. Writing is not easy. And if you have a book inside of you, do it. Whatever you're doing, keep going because it's going to be worth it. So many people are going to be blessed by what you have to offer. And I think our world needs more good things in it. And also keep writing, even in your spare time, and even, even if it's 15 minutes every day, try to write because that's going to help you First of all, your creativity. And second of all, it's amazing what you can create in 15 minutes a day. And if you do that for a few months, you'll have your book done and um, ready to be published. Esther, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us on the show today. And I cannot wait to have you back and have you back real soon. Thank you so much for for having me on. I've loved it. And um, I'm admiring your beautiful work that you do of all your books. And I wish you. And we were talking today to Esther Espinoza. She is the author of the book, Giselle, The Secret of the Locket. It's available wherever books are sold. So make sure you go ahead and pick up your copy today. Let me tell you, you are going to definitely enjoy this story. One thing I loved about this story is just how relatable the characters were. For some of you who may be tired of YA because you think it's highly sexualized or there's all this angst and all of that, this is not that book. And let me be clear, the actual name that the book is written under is Mays E and Stephanie G. So I need to make sure uh, Esther is the one who wrote it with her sister. So you're going to look for Giselle, The Secret of the Locket, written by Mays E and Stephanie G. And that information will be at the, in the show notes below. At the end of the day, I want you to take the words that Esther said. Take these to heart. Take them to heart. Go ahead, pick up the pen, and write stuff. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I'm the Queen, Parker J, and you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day.